K2ADD. Now that's exciting news. It, it, it should have made the front pages and probably out on the television and so on. It, it was, it was, well, the, the announcer was, you know, he was excited about it. But let me just give you a, a little fact. Our moon, we look up at the moon, you know, you, you, you see the moon, well, not every night, but uh, once in a while. And once in a while it becomes full and it's beautiful to look at, especially when it's reflecting off the water and, you know, it's, it's right romantic for some people. <laughs> for some people. <laughs> but our moon is 250,000 miles away. I think we can get that number up there on the screen. 250,000. That's what a moon is. The top number, 250,000 miles away. Now we know, you know, we, we, we're back, uh, when was it, this 60s, 70s, whatever it was back there, that, you know, man made his adventure to the moon, it cost him a fortune and, and, and so on, and they've been going to try and get there again, and, and they've been successful, and they failed, and, and, you know, they found, it was very expensive. 250,000 miles. Well, there's wonderful news. That other number that you see there. 660 trillion. That's where exoplanet K2 ATV is located. Now, they might be out by a few miles. <laughs> But that's where it's located. And people are excited because they've managed to discover that way out there, you know, unimaginable, there's water vapor. And they say, furthermore, that it's got the pet best possibility of alien life. There might be alien life out there at that distance. Now, just in case some of you are not too familiar with those uh, long miles, the distance from St. John's to uh, Montreal is approximately a thousand. It takes us, what, by plane, it's two, two and a half hours to get from St. John's to Montreal. And we are foolish enough, silly enough, to get our minds all excited because we are searching for something that's out there. We're searching for what's out there. But guess what? God has already provided what's out there. He made it in the first place. And God has promised not to be way out there, but He's promised to come alongside. He's promised to be with us. And to make sure that we understood that, to make sure that we had an appreciation for that, he was willing to send his son. We call him Jesus. He came 2,000 years ago and he died on the cross. He was rejected by man at that time. But he came with the purpose of providing an answer for sin. He came with a purpose so that we could have a relationship with Him. Not with something magical or with some situation or with some thing that's way out there. But with Him on a one-to-one -one basis. He sent His Son to die that we might have hope. Hope for today. Hope for tomorrow. Hope that goes beyond this life and the few years we have left, whatever it happens to be. It's wonderful to think that one of those, one of those days hope will be no more. It, it's not a new idea or anything like that. But there's coming a day when hope will be no more for these parents. Because hope will be a reality. It's going to happen. I, I'm convinced of that. I'm totally sure of that. But there's going to come that day when I'm not going to say I'm looking forward because I'll move from this old body. I'll move from this old the temple, if you want to call it that. And 
I'll move to that new land. I'll move to that new uh, situation that he's provided for us. He offers us life. He offers it today, real life, abundant life. We sing the chorus, I've been redeemed and bought with Christ. Jesus has changed my whole life. If anybody asks you just who I am, tell them, I am redeemed. What's your address? Well, Paul used an expression that sums up what my address is and many of you, your address. And all of us can have the same address. Throughout his writings and many books that he, he wrote, Paul uses the expression in Christ. In Christ. That's the address we ought to have. That's the address we need. In Christ. Because in Him, there is blessing. In Him, there is the hope. In Him, there is the peace. In Him, there's the joy of knowing that God is in control. And God will lead us all the way. If we live in Christ, we have all of those things and more besides. We don't need to worry. We don't need to fear. We don't need to, all of these concerns and struggles. And we can say, oh yes, all of these things are going on in the world around us. But in my heart, there's peace. Because I'm in Christ. Philippians chapter 3, verses 8 and 10. I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. Everything, all of this stuff, doesn't really matter too much. Consider everything a loss because that's greatness, real greatness. I want to know Christ, the power of His resurrection, the fellowship of sharing in his suffering. <coughs> Becoming like him. Where do you live? I trust that you can say in Christ. And that's my goal. To know him. To know the power of his resurrection. To share in his fellowship. And to share in his suffering. And to become like him. looking 